The Royal Merchant Ship Queen Mary was to be the flagship of the Cunard White Star cruise line when she was launched in 1936. The Queen Mary was then the longest ship in the world at 1,019 feet long. She was longer than the Eiffel Tower was tall. The RMS Queen Mary was a giant of the ocean and known for being bigger, faster and even more powerful than the Titanic. The craftsmanship that went into making her was the best of the time and even today the Queen Mary is considered to be among the most elegant passenger ships ever built. During the working life of the RMS Queen Mary, the stately North Atlantic liner played host to all the biggest names of the time, including celebrities, artists and political dignitaries. All the elite wanted to make the most of this floating luxury hotel in the upscale amenities it offered. Life aboard the Queen Mary was incredibly glamorous and the evenings were said to rival that of the great galas held in palaces. Because of the sheer speed and power of the Queen Mary, she was drafted in World War II and used to ferry Allied troops to the heart of the war. The Queen Mary was later decommissioned in 1967 and is now permanently docked in Long Beach, California, where she serves as a luxury hotel and a living museum. While the rich history of the RMS Queen Mary has no doubt earned her some impressive titles, the ship has earned a more notorious designation as of late. There are many ghost stories about the Queen Mary, and with so many of them, in fact, it might be fair to say that she's become one of the most haunted ships in the world. These ghost stories suggest that the ship is filled with cold spots, disembodied voices, and phantom figures. Ghost hunters now flock to the ship, and it's not hard to see why. Let's take a look at seven ghost stories of the RMS Queen Mary. Number seven, John Petter. The crew of the Queen Mary were running a routine emergency drill early on July the 10th 1966. 18-year-old crew member John Petter was near the engine room during the drill and he attempted to squeeze his way through door 13 as it was completing its 60 second closing process. Petter made a grave miscalculation about how long the door had left to close and the poor boy was crushed to death by the door. His body was nearly severed in two. Petter is now affectionately known by the name half Latch Harry, and he can sometimes be spotted in the corridors and elevators around the engine room. Visitors to Shaft Alley, the narrow passage between the store and the engine room, report being followed by a bearded man in dated work overalls. They report that this man will suddenly disappear near door 13, the door that killed young Petter. There are several other claims, including people having their clothes and purses grabbed, banging on pipes, and also greasy handprints appearing seemingly out of nowhere. Former tour guide for the Queen Mary, Nancy Ann, discussed her own encounter with the ghost of Petta. I don't know why I turned around, but I turned around, and standing right behind me on the step was a man. He had on blue overalls, and they were dirty. When I stepped aside to let him go by, he wasn't there. He was gone. Did Nancy feel Petter's presence? Was that what made her turn around? What happened to the man she saw? If it wasn't a ghost, then where did he disappear to? Number 6. Dana There are a number of tragic tales dotted throughout the history of the Queen Mary. One of the most tragic stories involves room B474 and what is reported to have happened in there. It is said that a man strangled his wife and child and left their lifeless bodies on the bed. He then made his way to the bathroom and shot his other daughter who was in there before taking his own life. Some people say that the daughter from the bathroom continues roaming the corridor of the Queen Mary ever since the incident. The girl, who was referred to 
by the name Dana, reportedly haunts the archive and cargo areas of the Queen Mary. People report being able to hear her playing and hiding among the crates. Ghost hunters are known to investigate the cargo area in the hope of finding a lost girl and claim that they have found proof she exists in the form of misty shadows and ghostly orbs that appear in the photos they take of the area. Visitors to the ship have also reported spotting Dana wandering around the second class pool, crying out for the mother, who she lost many years ago. Number 5. Woman by the Pool As well as young Dana haunting the second class pool, there is said to be a distinctive presence lingering among the first class pool. During times when the area is at its quietest, visitors report seeing the infamous woman in a bathing suit. It's hardly an intimidating name for a ghost of course, but it's hard to deny what an accurate description it is of the wandering ghost. Unfortunately, the passenger history of the Queen Mary is too dense to identify one particular woman. It is said that the woman appears to be in her late 20s or early 30s and wears a 1930s style bathing suit. Visitors often see the woman heading to the changing rooms and she occasionally walks along the edge of the pool. Some say that they can see footprints and puddles appear before the ghostly woman does, as if they're heralding her arrival. Number 4. John Henry It's rumoured that a man by the name of John Henry died near the generator room while he was working as a member of the construction crew putting the Queen Mary together in the 1930s. These days, the area is plagued by unexplained noises and reported sightings of a shadowy figure. People who go inside the room report being touched, having their cheeks brushed and feeling pulled or pushed on. People have also reported seeing a man's spirit looking down on them through a hole in the ceiling and then disappearing as soon as it is noticed. The most common sounds heard in the area are clanks and taps on the wall which is said to be consistent with the sounds made by men working on a ship. Is John Henry still working on the ship, even in death? Number 3. Jacqueline Turing There are a number of famous spirits said to be wandering the Queen Mary, and perhaps the most famous is that of a girl named Jackie. While we don't know for sure if Jacqueline Turing did indeed drown in the second class pool, she has apparently continued to frighten guests and investigators alike for decades. Jackie is the most commonly recorded spirit on the Queen Mary and is known to audibly answer questions and leave behind EVP or electronic voice phenomena exchanges. Tour guides on the Queen Mary will often attempt to coax Jackie into singing a little song for the guests. Sometimes she will. That must be a great bonus for anyone she sings to. Jackie is a playful spirit and she will often interact with visitors in the first and second class pool areas. Plenty of visitors have claimed to hear Jackie giggling and laughing, singing and splashing in the pool and asking people if they know where her parents and her teddy are. Some guests report hearing Jackie play with other children. Kathy Love, a maintenance supervisor for the Queen Mary, recounts one experience that she had with Jackie. We came into the pool and I heard giggling, <laughs> the sound of a little girl playing in the area. And at that point, I noticed there was splashing. The splashing stopped, the giggling <laughs> continued, and we observed the wet footprints of a small child walking across the locker room. I know that I saw what I saw. I'm not exactly sure why I saw it, but I know it was there. Number 2. The Lady in White Another famous spirit is the Lady in White. Her origins are not known, but what we do know is that she's seen frequently dancing a night's away in a dark corner of the Queen's Salon, which was formerly known as the First Class Lounge. The Lady in White is also said to hang around near the piano in the lobby. The piano used to be in the lounge, which may explain her attachment to it. The Lady in White is said to be a young and beautiful woman wearing a stunning white evening gown from the 1930s. When the lady isn't dancing, 
she could be seen by guests heading towards the lobby, walking through corridors and disappearing near the elevators. The Queen Mary is known for ghost tours and the lady is known to appear during these tours. Number 1. Room B340 There are a total of 355 rooms in the Queen Mary and most of them are considered to be haunted. When guests check in, they are presented with a list of rooms that reportedly have paranormal activity associated with them by the front desk. Of the 12 decks of the Queen Mary, the B-Deck is considered to be a central hub of supernatural energy and activity, in particular room B340. There have been persistent complaints about strange noises, footsteps, faucets being turned off and on, hangers in the closet moving by themselves, furniture moving by itself, voices and guests being touched, the comforter of the bed being ripped off and several other incidents. The situation got so bad that management were forced to close room B340. Even though the room is no longer available for guests to stay for the night, the activity has continued and so the room was stripped completely bare in the hope of solving the problem. However, guests in nearby rooms still report hearing unusual noises and claim to see full-bodied apparitions appear before them before disappearing through the walls into nearby room B340. It's not known for sure what is causing all the problems at B340. There is one story that suggests a staff member was murdered in the room and their spirit now drives out anyone who tries to stay in the 